What was your worst they can say is no event that ended worse than a no. Asked out this girl in middle school and she said I think I'm gonna throw up. Hurt like hell when I was little but when we met up years later, I found out it was because she was nervous. I thought she'd say no. What she actually said was can you not? Went to knock on someone's door to ask for money as part of an annual high school band fundraiser. Ended up being attacked and bitten by their dog. Left me with permanent damage in my leg and a fear of dogs I'm still not 100 over 12 years later. Asked boss for a raise. Got fired. Briefly had a job going door to door talking to people about solar power. Whole idea was we weren't selling anything just giving information so I wasn't worried about commission or anything. If someone wasn't interested fine by me. Walked up to a house that looked super nice and normal. Didn't have no solicitation signs or anything. Instead of just saying no they literally pulled a gun on me lol. If animals could talk, which species would be the rudest of them all? Cats? Geese? Obviously mocking birds. Hyenas? Jerks laugh at everything. Jays would be swearing and insulting everyone like crazy. Pretty sure that would be honey badgers. Those lil fucks sometimes are like the definition of crackhead energy and will pick fights with tigers just because it looked at it funny. Wasps? Squirrels? Just coos? They are nuts. Monkeys. Sloths. Imagine gets fucking insulted in slow motion. Seagulls would be most annoying. Rudest would probably be cats. They'd go out of their way to insult you and probably laugh street you for cleaning up their litter box. What country has the worst food? Op is starting wars. Sorry Mongolia but Mongolia. No vegetables or spices. Only boiled meat and fermented milk. As an older Brit, our food during that period between the 60s to the 80s was awful. We were the subject of jokes from foreign tourists and international businessmen. In more recent times, the quality has improved immensely. But I suspect that this is due to a lot of foreign chefs and a major influx of immigrants. Surprised I haven't seen Finland nominated yet. Anthony Bourdain agreed it's some of the worst he ever had. Blood pancakes anyone? Have you ever heard of Sir Sturming? The smell of it has evacuated buildings. It is a Swedish dish. In Norway, we have lutefisk, fish preserved with lye. It has a consistency comparable to jelly. It is considered a delicacy. What discontinued item do you miss most? Altoid sours. Suckas are like $100 a tin on eBay. Strawberry cream savers. I think you can still order them, but you can't get them anywhere near me. Butterfinger BBs. I can just eat the regular bar, but it's just not the same. The McDonald's snack wrap. The cell phones with the slide-out physical keyboards. Oreo cakesters. Apple empanadas at Taco Bell. Waffle crisp. The volcano menu at Taco Bell. Beefy crunch burritos from Taco Bell. Orbit soda. Those flavored Diet Cokes in the skinny cans they had for one summer and never brought back. They were delicious and made the best mixers. Also the cheesy gordita crunch with the fiery Dorito shell instead of the plain one. They still have Dorito shells, but it's only the regular nacho. They discontinued Cool Ranch and Fiery Nacho. What is a non-negotiable for you in relationship? Trust. You must be trustworthy and be able to trust me. Must respond with General Kenobi when told hello there. Wipe your ass after shitting. Work ethic. I'm not paying your bills. Monogamy. Incompetence. If you don't know how to do your laundry, cook a meal, or clean anything then I don't want to be with you. I'm not your mother or your maid. We are equals, I don't care if you are a man or woman, what your financial status is, etc. In a relationship we are equals and will respect one another. Must be funny. I don't do open relationships or polyamorous ones. What is something you always wanted as a kid that you bought for yourself as an adult? A PC that I don't have enough time to play on. One of those trains that go around the Christmas tree. I know it's simple, but when I was younger I'd always see it in the movies and it brings a smile to my face. A decent hand job. Double amputee. I'm typing with my ties. Ever tried rubbing one out with your heels? Didn't think so. A Japanese sports car. Loved them since I was younger, and as soon as I had the financial ability I bought one. Best decision ever. A movie theater. 
I vowed I would live in a house that had a theater ever since my parents took me on a local tour to see rich people's homes. Which is such a weird concept in retrospect, but was an annual event. Just finished having my theater installed earlier this year. What video game do you think could have been great but ultimately failed to reach its potential? Cyberpunk 2077 all the way. Anthem. Such a beautiful game, and a fantastic premise. The epitome of a mile wide but a few inches deep. Battlefront 2. Evolve had potential to be great but I think it didn't get any advertising. Had a lot of fun while it was out. Battlefield 2042. As I've grown older I've learned why the hate for E is valid, and they've actually gotten worse. Same for Ubisoft, they killed Assassin's Creed for me. Spore. It was a really neat premise, but once you got to even the tribal level, how you built your species pretty much didn't matter. They should have gone deeper into the aspect that actually made it interesting rather than it just being a little precursor to a mediocre space exploration game. Who is the least funny person in the world? James Corden, Putin, terrible setup and timing, Ellen DeGeneres. If no one has said Amy Schumer yet they probably have. But it's Amy Schumer, Lena Dunham, Kathy Griffin, the safeguard teacher in my school, ruins the good mood all the time just because he thinks he's funny when he's really not. Andy Dick, he's got the perfect name, Mike Pence. A couple of weeks ago, he did a whole speech about how he filled up his son-in-law's tank. And he said it with what was obviously written as pause of laughs in the script. No one laughed. It was very cringy. Second place is Hillary Clinton. Remember when she said everyone is playing Pokemon Go, but I think they should Pokemon Go to the polls. You are given immortality with the side effect of being sent back in time 500 years. Would you accept this offer, and if so, what would you do? I'd take it. Getting to the gold rush areas first as well as founding major cities would be fun. Knowing the outcome of 500 years of history would be a great bonus, and just gambling on some sporting events would keep me rich. Is it good immortality like I'm forever in my 20s or 30s, or bad immortality where I continue to age? If I am immortal, does that mean I can still get sick? Because I would imagine getting leprosy, and then never dying would suck all kinds of ass. Teleports to the 13th century Europe nobody on their phones. What a beautiful sight peasant beside me cherishes his last gap of amazement at my clean ass Jordans as he dies of common fever. You have the power to stop time. What's the first thing you do? I stop time and hold the future hostage. Stop time when I have an argument so I can think of a good reply and don't come off as stupid. Depends on if I'm still aging while time is frozen, that is important. There was a show I adored back in the day called Out of This World American TV series, which gave Time Stop as one of the protagonist's powers. She got into all kind of hijinks with it, but I always dreamed of using the power to up on everything. Even as a kid, untreated ADHD was doing a number on me. It loved to have the ability to stop time to be able to sleep 8 hours in 1 second, and keep doing stuff 24 hours. Or maybe if I forgot to do something I can freeze time, do it, and then restart time and have it done. And sometimes freeze time to just take a moment, like a break from literally everything. You were invited to someone's home for the first time. What shocked or surprised you about their lifestyle? As a young boy back in the 70s I visited a friend from school's house. It smelled different from any house I had ever been in. Which was mostly my parents' friends' homes and my relatives' homes. I visited several times before I figured out why it smelled different. No one in the home smoked cigarettes. My school friend lived on a farm in Wales. The first time I went round a sheep ran down the stairs as we were going in through the front door. There was also a newborn baby lamb warming in the aga because it was struggling to stay alive. My brother-in-law is a woodworker as a hobby. I knew it was very important to him, but when I actually went to his house, the whole entire house except for bedroom and bathrooms, he converted into one giant woodworking studio. You're given $100,000 to spend on one thing. What do you buy? I was thinking a down payment on a house, but that wouldn't really help that much at this point. Freedom from the remaining mortgage on my house. Land my boyfriend. Probably a little business that is closing, so I can make profit later as an owner. Gold. A Warhammer 40k armada. 
An expensive piece of industrial equipment capable of running on residential power such as a large format UV printer. If I don't have to incur any debt to put it into operation, it would essentially be printing money from that point on. $100,000 worth of GBP sterling, banning you from using the internet.